Now, what are the options that are on the ballot? So the first one, dual member proportional, the ballot is like this. Uh, the, the party will say this is, let's say party A, let's say this is liberal party. They say our first candidate is this, our second candidate is that. And basically every two jurisdictions would be combined and they will ask people to vote for a combination. So you can only put one cross on the choice that you are making, which basically says that I agree that this is my first choice and this is the second choice. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have a choice to say which one of the two is your choice. The way that it is listed is dictated by the party and it says this is the first choice, this is the second choice. Okay? You choose one of these and then the way that, uh, so basically, you put one mark, the first seat in, let's say, if we, if everybody votes and this choice gets, uh, let's say, 39% and this one gets 36% and 30% because this is relative majority, this would be the choice of your area and this is the candidate that will go to the a legislative assembly, a second person will be pending in this system. Um, so the candidate who the, the party put first will go to the parliament through a first-past-the-post system. So does it solve the problem of first-past-the-post system? It doesn't solve the problem of representation of the opinion of the people in the jurisdiction. But what happens is that Later, when all of the first choices, like from this jurisdiction, from the next jurisdiction, and the next jurisdiction, the first people, when they go to the parliament, then they look if it is proportional or not, and then they will distribute the rest of the vote based on the opinion of the parties, based on the, the way that uh, party chooses, they will say, okay, this guy from this city, will go to balance the, uh, the power in the parliament. So there is no guarantee that this second person would be from your jurisdiction or any other jurisdiction. It's a choice that is made by the party. I don't like the wording of it in the uh, booklets. It says, wherever the candidate did particularly well, um, very qualitative, criteria and uh, um, so this uh, I don't think that it solves the uh, it creates a proportionality but uh, people's intervention in the way that the proportionality is made is minimal compared uh, to the two others and uh, um, so basically it solves one of the problems which is lack of proportionality in the, in the parliament but it doesn't address it in a very natural way. Also, to prevent the people who are, you know, extreme, extremist people in the right, in the left, or, the, you know, to prevent those people who have their family voting for them to go to the parliament, they have put a threshold, uh, I call it an artificial threshold of 5%. Uh, if you don't get 5%, you won't go to the parliament. Where is this coming from? I don't think that there is any theoretical basis for that. Okay. So therefore, uh, as I have always said, I'm not uh, uh, neutral. I think this is um, not a good choice. Although it, it is better than first past the post, it does not address the, the problems. So basically the way that it will work in a simple situation is that though out of those six jurisdictions that we have, we create these, uh, you know, uh, uh, the combinations of two, and for example, uh, in now you just think about this. If we run a first past the post vote in this combined jurisdiction, who will go to power? Blue. Blue will go. From here, who will go? First past. Because for the first candidate is always first past the post in dual member proportional. From here, who will automatically go with the vote of people? 
Okay, if you combine these two, who has relative majority? No, blue has the, like blue is majority here and is majority here. If you combine them, it's still relative majority. So blue will go to the parliament. And who will go from this combination? Blue. Okay. So from all three uh, combined jurisdictions, blue will go. So this is what elections, you know, BC will have at the end of the processing of the first candidates of the parties. Now they see this is not proportional, of course, because there are so many people who want to have refinery in different locations. So what they do, they now go to the parties and they will ask, okay, for example, in this jurisdiction, your candidate became second. In this jurisdiction also, your candidate became second. And there, and there, and there, and for example, the party would say, I want this candidate and this candidate to go to the parliament. So what happens so here in dual member proportional artificial solution for one of the problems exists, what is not so, representative of the region, maybe not liked by the majority, people must still vote tactically, so if you are in this jurisdiction and you don't want the member of this blue party go to the parliament and you are green, you have to vote for these guys. All of the green, they must tell each other, look, we don't have any hope. So please vote orange. And then with tactical voting, they can send someone orange to the, to the parliament. So still tactical voting will work. And... Uh, the party power in the in the uh, parliament is balanced by the party power is now in the making of the decision of who is the first choice, who is the second choice in each area. They decide the first choice and second choice of people. Um, the situation for independence uh, is uh, problematic. Uh, if a, you know, the independence must also form a party. And uh, it also puts an artificial uh, threshold for who cannot go to the parliament. And I think 5% is much worse than what the third option would. Like, I think in the third option, it will, it, the threshold will never go below, below 10%. Just listen to me. I don't think that if people adopt RUP, the threshold that the person can go to the parliament would be less than 10%. While now they are you know, scaring people that if you go to proportionality, then, then extreme people go to the power. Actually, the, because let's say if, even if there is uh, you know, four people going from one jurisdiction, it would be much higher than 10%. Okay, so now the second method is better, uh, in my opinion, uh, better than the, the first proposal, multi-member proportional. It gives you the option to choose a person from your area by your election, uh, uh, choosing the name of the person. So again, it's a first past the post voting. You choose this person. It will be first past the post, the person who got 36% of the vote, 30, 30, you know, 25 and so forth. The first person will go to the parliament. So it is obvious that this first person still is susceptible to tactical voting and all of the flaws of first past the post. Uh, and then, once this, uh, these votes on the right side of the ballot is counted, then they will look at the other side and will check if that can balance the, the votes. So the most important problem of this second one is that still it is first past the post in nature. And all of the flaws that we mentioned exists. Um, the other problem is that when it reaches to the selection of the party uh, people who go to the parliament, okay, um, you don't even vote for the second person. There is a list that parties will publish, and they will say, we will use these people in this order to go to the parliament and create proportionality. And then... Um, different ways that it can be done is closed list, open list, and open list with party option, which is basically the first one says that there is a list that party says is that gives it to the you know uh, elections BC, and from that list the proportionality will be created. 
Second one is that, you know, it's open. People vote for individual candidates from specific parties. So it's like this side of it will have the name of the candidates, which is not shown to us here, but it could be that the name of the candidates is revealed and people vote for them. And there is also open list with party option, like you will vote for a person and also on a party, which is much more complicated than what we see here. But uh, it's not because of the complexity that I don't like this. The reason that I don't like this is that this is what will happen. Um, from each one of these combined jurisdictions, a person will go to, after people have voted, and you know that three candidates are from this party and two candidates are from that party. There is no problem having coalition. But in this system, if, it is fair, if you just vote for one person, look at this, this is not like the ballot that George gave you at the beginning of today's session. You just put a cross. So we don't know what is your second choice. Okay. Therefore, when the person from a jurisdiction goes to the parliament as the candidate from your local area, all of them would be blue, and nobody asks you about your second choices. Okay? And the only solution are the two classical solutions for first past the post. A speculative co coalition, like these people have to speculate and do polling and those kind of things and realize that they have to create a coalition before the election, uh, or people have to vote tactically. And then these things, these three other people, come from uh, one of these three ballots that are not clear yet which one of them it will be. NDP realized that this is not a good popular choice. People don't like a closed list by a party determining who will go to the election. So they recently said that it is off the table, which is a good move. Now, um, but it created a mess in the propaganda domain. Um, but it is good, for me, it is good that it is dropped from the domain of possibilities. Still, between these two, it is um, an ambiguity. You see the, so the problems that uh, uh, remains with multi-member proportionality is that but to me, it's an artificial solution because the people uh, first go to the parliament with first past the post, and then we are trying to adjust a non-proportional outcome through uh, the party list. The representative of the region may not be liked by the majority. People must still vote tactically. Uh, party power influences those closed lists, open lists, or whatever it is, and independent situations again would be uh, in, you know, it will weaken the situation for independence. Now, the one that I like for those of you who noticed what was the problem of first past the post, once you look at the ballot, you know this is the solution. Because we knew that we, the information that is missing is the preference of FIFA. So those who have followed uh, from the beginning of the discussion till now, they don't need more reason that this is better. Okay? This, is the, this is the ballot that asks your first preference. If you don't want to disclose it, just mention your first preferences. Uh, but also it asks you the second preference, that if your first preference doesn't have majority, then they will look at your next preferences. So it is a multi-member single transferable vote which was the one that I, you know, theoretically we saw it's the best solution. Uh, uh, it could be worse than this, like it could be single transferable vote in every jurisdiction, which we already saw it's not a good idea. By having multi-member single transferability, it will automatically create the proportionality. And the other thing is that uh, the minimum number of people that go from each jurisdiction it's not like I say it is 5% everywhere. It depends to the number of people in each jurisdiction, and it depends to the number of candidates that are in each jurisdiction. So let's say if there are 100 people, and we have to elect four people, what is the threshold? 100, we want to elect four people. So divide 100 by 5, 20, and plus 1, 
you have to get 21% of your vote consumed or attributed to a person to push him to the parliament. You don't have 21% of people, like you're a terrorist, you will not go to the parliament. Okay? And this 5% is not dictated by my idea or someone else's idea. Yeah. Now, do you want that this threshold to go down? You think that it is not good that 21, you know, if you have 20% vote, you cannot send anyone to the parliament? I agree with you. We have to make the size of the parliament instead of being 90 people, it must be 100 people. Then the number of people from this jurisdiction, instead of being four, will be five. Mm -hmm. And the threshold would be 100 divided by six. And it would be like 16%. Now those people who have 15% of the vote cannot go. Mm. Do you have the budget? You know, do you want to send 200 people to the parliament? Fine. Then the threshold will be 10%. Mm. Okay? And it will never be 5%. So the threshold of RUP is higher than all of the others. And the proportionality is not by intervention of any political party. The residue of first past the post is still in RUP. So that is not, that is not what I, like, would be ideal for me. Uh, but there is, I understand why this um, MMP exists for rural areas. The rural areas in British Columbia, and I think in Canada, they have a special thing uh, that is different than theory. Very small communities that I have dealt with in my research, far from each other, mm -hmm. and we cannot enforce them to think of a candidate that represents all of them. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, they're willing to accept the risk of first past the post, uh, but uh, wanting someone that they know in a, you know, a community of 5,000 people in northern British Columbia, and they want one of their uh, members that they know in their community to go. And I think it is already considered, like if it needs, uh, right now even, at the current system, if it needs 20,000 people to send someone from Vancouver to the parliament, in some jurisdictions in Northern British Columbia, it's like 7,000, which I think is reasonable because, uh, because of the nature and dispersity of the dispersion of the people and communities in Northern British Columbia. So, although theoretically, um, I would like to see multi-member, single transferable vote everywhere, but considering the ge geographical situation in British Columbia and the distribution of population, um, uh, I think this distinction could be done. But if I was doing it, I would choose, instead of a first past the post to all you no know, party involvement and those kind of things, I would choose single transferable vote for a single person, the one that we started today's session with. So if I was designing the system, I would make it single transferable vote for rural communities and multi-member single transferable vote and you know merging. This one would solve everything and this one would solve the representation problem. So anyway, we don't have that on the ballot. Uh, but out of all of the things we have, for 80% of people and decisions, it will be ideal. And for rural communities, I think they will be happy considering their own situation. So there is a residue of first past the post, but it is, I think it is fine. Um, for 80% of the people, the problem of representation will be solved. Tactical voting in cities is meaningless because we are asking people all over their preferences. And the quota is determined by the budget and uh, it's definitely more than 5% and there's no chance of you know, minority extreme groups to go to the parliament. Um, so this is the situation that will happen if um, in British Columbia it happens. These are the rural areas with little population. These are urban areas with a lot of population. And what we will do is that we will merge, uh, for example, four jurisdictions in the uh, urban areas to form a STV voting system. And we will merge two by two, you know, two villages that are close to each other, another two and another two, and a multi-member proportional system for those, uh, you know, dual communities close to each other. Uh, the way that it will work is that for the rural environments, two 
uh, people would be elected with first past the post, and these two will be adjusted by the party list. I hope that it will be open party list with uh, people's input and so forth. And uh, for bigger communities, these will be combined. A true proportional system will be there. As you see here in this example, I made it such that blue has majority. Therefore, blue has majority in the parliament and the voice of the other uh, people is also in the parliament. And overall, the blue will have majority in this specific example that I put there. So this is an example. Those uh, things that you see at the top, uh, these are not uh, you know, ants walking. This is in Persian. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, um, 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 I, I, I missed to, to change it. Um, now, this is a scenario that we walk through to understand an example, an easy example. Let's assume that uh, uh, we give people to choose uh, candidates that are liberal, NDP, and green. Okay. So here we have five people who have chosen a candidate that was liberal. Their second choice is NDP and green. And I made that to be realistic, like if you are a liberal, the chance that your second choice is NDP is low. Most liberals, their second choice may be green and NDP in British Columbia. And uh, then for NDP people, their second choice is green and the third choice is liberal. There are some NDP people who their second choice is liberal and their third choice is green. Uh, notice that there have been 30 ballots that have voted like each other. Um, in your case, uh, what George is dealing with is very complicated because you have 16 choices and maybe all your ballots are unique. What is simplified here is that I'm assuming that a lot of people have voted very similarly. Okay? Um, so now, um, the, um, when we want to think about who, let's say we want to choose four, the four is in English, so it's obvious, we are choosing four people to go to the parliament. Okay? And there are 45 people. So first of all, we have four candidates. What would be the quota? Hmm. 21. Okay, calculate it. I will randomly choose you and you have to answer on the microphone. 21 100 people and uh, we have four candidates. What is the quota? 21. 21. 21. No, no. 26. 4 plus 1. You have to add 1 to 4. 5. 5. five. five. So 100 divided one. by 5 gives us 20 plus 1. Plus one. So you have to have 21 votes and spend 21 of your voting power, whatever you can call it, uh, then uh, that one person will go uh, to, the, to the thing. So we can imagine that uh, out of these 45 people whose uh, first choice was NDP, they can send uh, how many people? 45? Two people. Two people. You can send two people. The liberals can send uh, how many people? One. one. 20, oh, they can send only one person, one. right? And then the green has 20 votes. No. They cannot send anyone. But look what happens is that after NDP sends their two candidates, how much, uh, how much power they have? The NDP. So they have three votes. Mm -hmm. And their vote is like mostly NDP green lip and least is NDP lip green. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this portion, 2.68 of their vote, this is the transferability, single transfer. So this 2.68 will go to green and this 0.34 will go to lip, uh, to lip and a green will also go to, to the parliament as the result of this automatic distribution of the residue. And now we have everyone in the parliament with a beautiful majority. Uh, and by that, I finish uh, my presentation. And the most which is.